Hey, Big John here. I've got the DP-12 pump action double barreled shotgun. I remember watching The Simpsons. I'm a huge Simpsons fan, some of you may know. Uh, I remember watching The Simpsons and seeing seeing a double barrel pump shotgun one time on, on that show, or actually several times, I think, and thinking how silly that was. And uh, somebody actually made one. Uh, of course, on The Simpsons, it just had two firing barrels and a pump, which obviously that wouldn't work. Uh, so on this gun, you've got almost like you got four tubes basically the top two are your barrels and on the bottom you have the magazine so it's like two pump shotguns next to each other right almost a similar concept as, as that uh, arsenal 1911 except the difference is unlike the 1911 this gun actually is is not really a gimmick as I, maybe i thought that it was at first it seems really well made really solid uh so far i'm impressed with it and Above all else, I've just been having some fun with it. So let me let me shoot it and see if I can make this thing work. Now it takes a little getting used to because of the fact that, well, I mean, you have two shots in between each pump, and that's really unnatural. Uh, but I think I could get used to it. Of course, the release is right here. See that? It's ambidextrous. You, got it. you can access it on either side. Just push down. All right, two rounds in there. Safety off. Hey, nothing else, this thing's a lot of fun to shoot, but uh, it's a really interesting gun to me because you know, like Dad mentioned in the video that you probably saw, it it seemed like a gimmick at first. Whenever I first heard of it, um, it just seemed like, oh, okay, a double barrel shot. That's cool that somebody you know, thought to make that, but it's it's gotta be a gimmick. You know, a, a, what, a double barrel pump shotgun? But the thing is, it's uh, now that it's in my hand, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of it and it actually might have some uh some real tactical applications um there's 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 definitely an advantage to having a shotgun that holds 14 plus two rounds or even 14 plus one rounds and that was a lot of the reason for the popularity of the ksg well and the uts uh regardless of the uts's extreme drawbacks and the ksg's uh, also drawbacks which I played with the KSG a lot, actually. Um, so we had that gun for maybe a year or so, something like that. And it had a, I ended up getting rid of it just because there was a lot of things about it that I didn't like. I liked the overall concept of it, but it was really hard recoiling for what it was. I mean, I, you know, again, it's, the recoil is not a tough guy thing. I could handle it if I really wanted to, but it wasn't fun. You know, it really just, the, the gun just beats you up, even with, um, you know standard ammo uh then you also have the issue of ejecting the rounds out you know cutting your wrist that happened to me a bunch every time i shot it i would have i'd be bleeding right here um then you have the uh, you know the, the the switch on the back you know it felt a little flimsy it was a little hard to get get to and then you had to make sure that you switched it when you were empty uh that was that was the thing about that gun um you know so and then it really there's not a big advantage of necessarily having control over each magazine yeah you could uh, select which rounds you're going to put in there but the thing is let's say uh i don't know you got slugs on one side and double out buck on the other side and you're ready to go and you've got a double out buck round up ready to go and you're going through the woods or whatever and all of a sudden you realize hey i need a slug there's a, a bear over there that i want to shoot with the slug well, the problem is it's not like you can just all of a sudden switch to slugs. You got to first switch to the right magazine and then you'd have to jack out that live round and then put another one in there. So, you know, that, so I wasn't crazy about the KSG and I, and just like that, I don't really like bullpups, especially a bullpup shotgun, but this one, uh, to me actually makes a little bit more sense it's because one, you have two barrels, um, uh, and you have that system where you know, the rounds are just going right up into into the barrel so it's not um it's not putting the the gun like it's not as likely to put the gun into a bind the the, the way that it functions and also i'm just not a big fan of uh Kel tech they, they come out with a lot of really interesting innovative products but 
but they don't necessarily have the greatest track record for reliability and, and uh, durability. And this thing just feels a lot, a lot more solid. Let me shoot some more. And also, it seems to have uh, solved the the big problems I have with the KSG. For example, the recoil. These are some really hard kicking uh, three inch magnums. I'll put some of those in there. We'll give you an idea of what the recoil management is like on this thing. Of course, it has the spring loaded butt pad, which makes a big difference. And also, the weight of it makes a big difference too. The KSG is lighter, which is an advantage, I guess, but I don't know. In a big shotgun like this, I don't think I mind the weight too much. Okay, fire a couple of these suckers off. Let's see, Let's get down here and get this. Thank you. That was a handful right there. That was a lot of fun though. But it, uh, I mean, you almost couldn't pay me to do that with the KSG. I mean, I could handle it, but it's just, man, that would be, that would be rough with the KSG. This thing really seems to handle that a lot better. Really the only things that I don't like about this gun are just inherent things about um, a bullhub shotgun and design like this. The fact that if you have some kind of hang up, which this thing so far has been reliable, but it hasn't been out long enough to know for sure. So you have a problem. I mean, how, you know, it would be hard to, to fix a situation up in here very easily um, if you had some kind of issue just because of the nature of it. And then also, one thing you can't do, it's kind of handy uh, with your standard pump or even a semi-automatic, is if you have some kind of special round that you want to put in and fire for, for some kind of specific uh, purpose, you can just uh open the open the action and pop it in close it and you're ready to shoot with this gun can't really do that um it, you couldn't i mean you couldn't really do that you'd have to you'd have to just pop it in and have to it would come up next that would basically be your option for that uh but it's it's cool because of how short it is and it's just i don't know it's it's a really interesting gun I have a lot of fun with it shoot it again I don't know if it will end up being something that people use in actual real tactical situations or not, but uh, I could, I could, I don't know, I, I could see it, see it being more likely to be used in the KSG. As you can see, loading it is obviously one of the disadvantages. I don't know where those rounds went. There's something here. But it's also, it's so, uh, it's so weird. It's a very foreign concept of having a double barreled pump. It's definitely going to take some getting used to. But then again, you also have 14 rounds, so not as likely to have to top it off in a, in a hurry. And one thing that this gun has, just like the KSG, is the way that it holds these rounds in the tube. It's got these hooks right here. And uh, those things are kind of wicked. It's easy to get your hand on those and cut yourself or something like that, like I think Dad might have done. I don't know if that's just the only option in guns like this, but if it's not, that's something I wish they would change. I'll tell you another thing too, Dad addressed a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people were compl were complaining about this gun that it doesn't have the capability to fire both barrels at one time. And while I'll admit that would be kind of cool, it does make sense that they have it set up the way that they that they do. But I, I wish there was a way I could have that option. Now I don't know about the mechanics and the engineering that went into this gun. Maybe it's just not possible, or if it was possible, it would make it you know, twice as expensive. But it would be pretty cool if it had a selector switch right here where. You had safe fire and double, and you could just put it on that mode. That would be pretty cool, but I don't know if that's doable. I keep wanting to 
to, to pump it after that first shot. Okay, I got a hot one in there. These are hot rounds, wherever they are. Alright, I guess I picked up some of these hot rounds, but uh, it's a pretty neat gun though. I have a lot of fun with it. So far, it makes more sense to me than, than the KSG, definitely than the Utahs. Uh, that gun was kind of weird. Um, you know, we didn't really have the problems with it that some of the other uh, people on the internet did, but I admit it was it was a weird gun. It was big but light at the same time, and it it was pretty hard kicking. And and the, the thing too uh, that the the Utahs and the KSG have in common is that they had this, and the Utahs was worse about it. They had this weird extra thing when you're when you're pulling the pump back. It was like there was this extra little spot right here that was hard. It was it was consistent and then you got back right there and there was an extra little oomph that you had to do to to get it to come back all the way so it made both of those guns really easy to short chuck um and this gun doesn't seem to have that it's smooth the whole way it seems like to me so that's one one thing i like about this gun but so far it seems pretty cool but um we'll probably have it around and i'll shoot it some more and just you know, see what i think about it but uh Appreciate you guys for checking out the video and we'll talk to you later.